This is the sixth section of chapter four on graphs and transformations. And this section is about stretching graphs. Now there are two types of stretch or squash that we need to know about, and also two special cases. So the first stretch is where you see y equals a number times by the original graph or function f of x. Now what this does is this stretches, and I've just corrected my spelling there, it stretches a graph by a factor of a in the y direction. So the graph is going to get stretched up and down by whatever that value of a is. Now one way to help you do that is to take any y coordinates of the graph and multiply them by a. You leave the x coordinates unchanged, but you multiply the y coordinates by a. Now the second stretch or squash as I call it is when you get the number in the brackets. Now if you remember from the last translation when we had the number in the bracket it always did the opposite to what we expect and that's no different here. So A doesn't stretch the graph it squashes it uh, by a factor of A which is the same as stretching by a factor of 1 over A in the X direction. Now notice with the translation when it was in the bracket what did it affect the x direction when it wasn't in the bracket it affected the y direction so there's some similarities here. So squashing by a or you can think of it as stretching by 1 over a and a, a way to help you sketch the graph is that you take the x coordinates and you divide them by a you leave the y coordinates unchanged. So the first one is if you see y equals negative f of x, in other words, a negative sign in front of the original graph, you reflect the original graph f of x in the x axis. And if you see f of and a ne negative sign is in the bracket, then you take your original graph and you reflect it in the y axis. Example 12. Given that f of x is equal to 9 minus x squared, sketch the curves with these equations. So the first thing we're going to do is to sketch this graph here, and then I'm going to draw these um, on separate sketches rather than, as I did before, on the same sketch. So let's see what this looks like. So let's write it as y equals 9 minus x squared. Now I know because the coefficient of x squared is negative, I know this is going to be an n-shaped quadratic like this. Let's find out where it crosses the axis. So first of all, let's make x equal to 0. So if we make x equal to 0, we're going to have y equals 9 minus 0 squared. So that gives us y equals 9. So that's going to give us a coordinate um, 0, 9. Now we'll find out what the x coordinates are when y is 0. So when y is 0, we'll have 0 equals 9 minus x squared. We can rearrange that to get x squared equals 9. Now we square root it, but you need to remember the two square roots. So x equals plus or minus 3. Mustn't forget that. So that gives us two coordinates, 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. So first thing is to plot these points on. So I've got 0, 9. Remember this is not to scale, it's just a sketch. Um, 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. And it's going to be this shape quadratic. So I just need to draw it going through those points there. So just a sketch like this. So this will enable me now to quickly complete parts A and B. OK, so part A, first of all, we need to identify with what this does. So we've got the number two in the brackets here. What this does, it affects in the X direction, but does the opposite to what we expect. So we can either think of it as squashing by a factor of two in this direction or stretching by a half. 
So think of it either one of those ways. And then the way I'm gonna do this is I'm actually gonna work out the coordinates first, then sketch it. So the Y coordinate is going to remain unchanged. And now I'm going to divide all of the X coordinates by two. So the coordinate that was nine or zero nine, zero divided by two is still zero. So the coordinate zero nine actually stays as zero nine if I divide the X coordinate by two. The coordinate that was three zero now becomes three divided by two, so 1.5 or three over two zero. And the coordinate that was negative three zero now becomes negative three over two zero. So what I'm going to do is mark those coordinates on and then just join the points together. So this is three over two. This will be negative three over two. This will be nine. And then I just draw my quadratic going through these points. Now you might think to yourself, well, actually, this looks exactly the same as the one over here, but I've changed the scale. I've done it on a different scale. If I were to draw it on here, I'd probably find that it would be like this, and maybe it's just a dotted line like this, but I am going to take this out. But yeah, that's what it would be look like if I should draw it on the same scale. Then we can move on to part B, where we've got y equals 2f of x. Now when we've got the 2 there, what this does is it stretches it by 2 in this direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply all of the y coordinates by 2. So the 0, 9, multiply the y coordinate by 2, becomes 0, 18. The 3, 0, multiply the y coordinate by 2, well, it's still 3, 0. And the negative 3, 0, multiply the y coordinate by 2, it stays as negative 3, 0. So I can see that when I draw it, it's basically going to look like this, but it's going to go twice as high. Now, my sketch may not look much different, and that's because I'm using a different scale. So here's my uh, y axis, or going to call it the x axis, y axis here, x axis here, and I'm just going to mark the values down. So again, this isn't really to scale. So I'm going to have 18 here, 0, 18. I'll try and do it to scale if I can. So 3, negative 3, like this, and then we'll draw, draw our our graph through that, not the greatest sketch, let's try again. So what's really important is that we get the shape right and we get the coordinates right. If you do that, you'll get four marks. It doesn't need to be perfect, but let's get the right shape and let's get the right coordinates. Example 13, we need to sketch this curve and then on the same axis, we're gonna sketch a couple of other curves here. So we wanna make our, our grid as big as possible. So the first thing we need to do is to work out what type of graph this is and what the coordinates are going to be. Right, so I know if I expand the brackets here, it's going to be a cubic. The coefficient of the x cubed is going to be positive. So it's going to be this type of shape, or it may be this type of shape, it all depends. We'll work that out once we work out what the values of the coordinates are. So let's start by making x equal to zero. So if you make x equal to zero, we'll have y equals zero times by zero minus two times by zero plus one. Well, I can see that's going to give me y equal to zero. So that gives me the coordinate zero, zero. Then I'm going to see what the values of x are when y is zero. So if you make y equals zero, we end up with zero equals x times by x minus two times by x plus two. So what values of x are going to make this equal to zero? Well, x equal to zero will do. And x equal to two from the second bracket. And then x equal to negative one. So if I write those coordinates down, the first one's going to be zero, zero, which I've got already. Then the other coordinates are going to be two, zero, and negative one zero so i've got all the coordinates i need to draw my cubic 
Now my qubit's not going to be bouncing off any um, axes because I haven't got any x squared. So it's going to cut through all of those points. So we'll mark the coordinate 0, 0, 2, 0, put 2 there, and negative 1, 0. So let's put that there. Then all we've got to do is to join the points. So up here, cross, cross, and then cross again, and then we end up here. Now, since we're drawing lots on the same grid, we're going to label them. So this is the y equals x, x minus 2 times by x plus 1. Now we can move on to part b. On part b, we're going to sketch, first of all, this on the same axis, y equals 2x, 2x minus 2, uh, 2x plus 1, and then the other one. Now, when we get a question like this, we want to look for some link between this and the graph that we just sketched. Is there something that we can do to this to make it look like this? So if we look, can you see that all the X's have been replaced with 2X? So all the X's have now become 2X. Now, what does that mean? If the original graph is F of X and we've replaced the X's with 2X, that means this X here we replace with 2x. So look out for patterns like that. So this is our transformation. The original x got replaced with 2x. The original x gets replaced with 2x. So now we just need to identify what this transformation does. So what this will do is this will take the x coordinates and divide them by 2. It will squash by 2. Or you can think of it as stretching by a half. Either way, what's going to happen is the x coordinates are going to get half. So we'll do this in a different color. So let's do this in blue. So this negative 1 divided by 2 is going to become negative a half. This 2 here divided by 2 is going to become 1. And the 0 x coordinate stays as 0. So let's put that there. And we're just going to draw the same type of shape, but now going through these points, you can see how it's got squashed in this X direction, but the Y directions remain unchanged. So it's still going to go to the same peak and trough down here. And that's important. So we're going to draw this like that. It's still going to go to the same height because the X coordinates don't get changed. It's still going to go just as low as the other one, but then up like that. OK, so we'll label this one here as actually rather than write it out again, I'll just put an arrow going to there. So that's the blue line. Now, the other uh, graph we needed to plot was this one. So let's write that down. So we've got y equals negative x, x minus 2, x plus 1. Now, in this equation I've got here, x hasn't been replaced with anything else because there's a negative x and none of these are negative x. But this is like the original graph that I had, but with a negative sign in front. OK, so it's like taking my original graph, my original function, and just sticking a minus sign in front of it. And that gives us this transformation. Now, this transformation is a reflection in the x-axis. So I'll just write that down. Reflect in x-axis. So this is where we need to use our reflecting skills. This is our mirror line. So anything up here will get flipped down to the bottom. And so we should have something like this. You might just want to trace it out first before you actually draw it crossing at the same places, but flipped in the X direction. So let's try and draw that out, try and be as accurate as we can. So up here, down through there, and then back up through there. So that's our reflection. So the green line represents that last one that we did, which is Y equals negative X, 
times by x minus 2 times by x plus 1. Now I'm just going to try and draw a little bit better because this peak here needs to be going the same as that trough. So let's try and improve it a little bit and try just to get it a little bit higher like this. There we go. That's probably a, a slight improvement. Example 14 on the same axis, sketch the graphs of y equals f of x. And it tells us what f of x is. So the first thing we want to do is work out what this looks like. Right, so it's a quadratic. Coefficient of x squared is positive, so it's going to be a U-shaped quadratic. We'll start by making x equal to zero. Now you should be at a point where maybe you can do these without having to write this down. But when x equals zero, we'll have uh, y equals zero times by zero plus two, which means that y equals zero. So that gives us the coordinate zero, zero. Then we'll make y equal to zero. So that will give us zero equals x times by x plus two. So the values of x are going to be um, either x equals zero or x equals negative two. Now we've, when x equals zero, it gives us coordinate zero, zero, which we've got already. And then the other coordinate will be the coordinate negative two, zero. So these are gonna be the coordinates we're gonna use for our original graph. So we'll plot um, the zero, zero and the negative two, zero. So something like this. And we'll draw our quadratic. Here we go, passing through those two points like this. So what we'll do is we'll just label this as the graph y equals f of x y equals f of x and it tells us to draw them all on the same axis okay so uh, we'll draw this one first so this one is a reflection in the y-axis so i need to reflect this in the y-axis so it's probably going to look something like this now i should really mark on this coordinate negative two because it's going to get reflected over to two. So my reflection I'll do in a different color, let's do it in green. So I'm going to have something that looks a bit like this. Okay, and what we'll do, we'll label that as the graph of y equals f of negative x. Then the last one is this one here, the negatives in front. So this one is when we do a reflection in the x-axis so we're going to reflect this in the x-axis like this so we'll do this one maybe in blue so it's going to look something like this and then we'll label that up as the graph of y equals negative f of x so you should now be able to do exercise 4F on page 78.